Hi, my name's Tony Knight and I'm a dog listener. And for over 15 years now, I've been traveling the world, helping people sort out their doggy dilemmas, pooch problems, and hounds from hell. But now I'm back to where it all started and where I grew up. So join me as I show you how to think like a dog. Ever since I can remember, I've always been surrounded by dogs. And that's pretty much thanks to my mum, Jan Fennell, who's also known as the Dog Listener. And her international best-selling book is translated into over 25 languages. And one of the things I love most about this process is it's easy to do. Anybody can do it, you don't need to be an expert. And it's completely natural. During this series, you're gonna learn a different way to train your dog, which is gonna make a lot of sense, and it's a lot of fun too. In today's episode, I meet Merlin, a dog who's driving his own and barking mad. I put my life on the line for television, and we meet this mysterious and gorgeous redhead. One of the things I love about the process we teach is that you don't have to be a dog expert or a superhero to do it. Anybody can. And because it directly corresponds with the dog's nature, you don't need to use force or gadgets or drugs to get your dog calm. Tens of thousands of years ago, humans and canines got together for survival reasons. And although today's dogs may look a little bit different from their cousins, they still think the same way. In fact, so do we. And you don't have to travel to the wilds of Borneo to see us do it. You can just go to the end of your street. One of the biggest problems that we have when it comes to training dogs is that we think that dogs think like us. We humanize them. Now, the fact is, and this is fundamental to getting the best relationship from your dog possible, is to understand that actually people think like dogs. We do it every day and we don't even think about it. Hello, my name's Ross Dyer, or Danny Kemp, or something like that, and welcome to another episode of Scary People, where I meet people that are scary, don't I? Well, in the past, I've been shot at by the Taliban in Afghanistan, and I've been in East End boozers with Cockney gangsters. But today, I'm feeling right out of my comfort zone. Let's get ready. Hey. Okay, I think I'm ready. By the way, if you've got a dog that rolls in smelly stuff, he's doing exactly the same thing that I've done with my face. Camouflage, even if it's a smell, means that you can sneak up on your prey like a ninja. So if your dog rolls in gross stuff, wash it off with water until you can't smell it anymore. Right. I'm ready to go. Let's go get him! Oh no! It's worse than I thought! Every Saturday afternoon, people can go to their local football club and cheer for their favourite team. They even dress up in the same colours. Just like wild canines, human beings get together in packs. For example here, go into a football game. And when they do, they sometimes don't like the nearest pack to them. That could be your local rival. Because in the wild, your local rival is your rival for survival. Right, I think I'm in luck today, but natives are friendly. I'm getting in there now to ask some probing questions. So, why do you support Scunthorpe? Uh, I like Scunthorpe United because they're a local team. Because it's my hometown and I love them. I like Scunthorpe United because I was born in Scunthorpe and I've followed them through and through, so the Ains the favourite team for me. Because they're the best. Hometown, you've got to support your hometown yeah. club. I spotted them for four years when my dad first uh, took me, and I love them. Quite a scum for up. All right, what teams do you hate? Mostly the Premiership. Grimsby Town, Hull City. The rivals I hate is Hull City, Grimsby Town, uh, Doncaster. Doncaster. Grimsby. Man United. Hull City. <laughs> <laughs> but mainly Grimsby. And Grimsby. Yeah. Please do not allow your dog to foul. Shame they didn't say that the players. <laughs> the similarities between humans and canines is not lost on psychologist Charles Armitage either. What is the importance of social pack dynamic? As humans, we are actually a group bound species. So our ancestral history prepares us to live and work in groups for survival. These days, we tend to find esteem from being in a group. So how is hierarchy important in that? We create in groups and out groups. That's how we form groups. The in-group defines who we are and also who we aren't. And there's always a favoritism towards the in-group. 
So there was some research done by Turner and Toshfell. They observed that we categorise, we find it useful to put people into groups to understand them. We identify, we associate ourselves with those groups. And that is called our in-group and that helps us to build esteem. When humans and canines got together, one of the things they did for us was to be early warning devices to let us know if there was a problem. And that's still relevant today. I've got a friend whose house is the only one down her street that's not been burgled. And the reason why is when people go past the house, her dogs run out and bark. And she thanks them and they stop. I can't imagine one burglar seeing that and going, I like a challenge. So when we realise that a dog barking is not the problem, we think differently about it and we can start to put techniques into place, which means the dog stops barking sooner. And that's what we want. Now where we go wrong with dogs is when they alert us to that problem, we often shout at them, telling them off. And that's not right for a very good reason. And I'm going to show you with the aid of some very accomplished actors. When I was four years old, if I was playing in the living room with my Lego and somebody came to the front door, I'd tell my mum there was someone there. I wouldn't go and answer it. I'm only four, it could be anybody. And she's the one I trust to make the decisions. And if she didn't hear me, I'd say it again until she did. And when she heard me, what she would do is she'd go to the door, but before she did that, she said I was a good boy for letting her know. Job done. I've told her there's someone at the door. Imagine what would have happened if my mum had come in and told me to shut up. That's not exactly the right signal when I was doing my job. So imagine this scenario. I'm four years old, playing with my Lego. Somebody comes to the front door and I do my job. I say to my mum, Mum, there's oh, someone at the door. At the door. But instead of her thinking this oh. is a good thing, she's annoyed that I'm making a noise. Oh. And instead oh. of thanking me, Shut up! She threatens me. That's not great. I was only doing my job. That's crazy when you think about it. So what we've got to understand is, thank you is useful. Shut up is not. Especially because the dog thinks you're upset as well. And if it feels you're upset, it's not blaming itself, it's blaming the problem out there. And if you carry on screaming at the dog, the dog thinks you're joining in. So it's not a bad thing if your dog's bark, but we want to show them that your job is to let me know, not to do something about it, just let me know. So the first thing you do is you thank your dog. Now some dogs, because they're, they're panicky dogs, they will carry on because they just lose the plot. So there's, there's another stage after thanking. If your dog carries on barking after you thank the dog, second stage is, Go and have a look to see what the problem is. Don't look at the dog, look to see what the problem is. Even if it could be, you know, it could be nothing at all. The dog may have heard something or smelt something or something's already gone past. Don't go, what are you barking at? Just imagine that the dog's barking at something for you to look at. And I make a bit of a show of it when I do this. I go out and I go, what is it? I'm a bit dramatic sometimes. But I'm not looking at the dog. I want the dog to see me assessing the situation. And then I go, good dog. Now I can either take hold of the dog and bring it in home, bring it inside, or I can just leave it out there. But if the dog carries on barking after you've said thank you and you've gone and had a look and thank the dog, the third stage is without a word, just put the dog in another room, out of the way, don't tell it off, just wait for it to calm down. Because your attitude is then, please yourself, calm down. And what's great about the thank, look and time out is your pulse rate stays nice and low. Okay, Gypsy's heard some children talking over the fence and she's alerting me that there's a problem. So, good girl. First thing we do is we thank them. If that doesn't get them back, the second thing is we go and have a look. Not looking at the dog, but looking to see what the problem is. So the dog can actually see you assessing the problem. So I'm basically going to her. So she's waiting for me to respond. So I'm going to have a look. Good girl. And she's a very clever girl because <laughs> her job's been done. That's what's good about that is it keeps you calm so the dog sees that this is not a problem. Now she might try and start playing with me, that would be on her terms. Dogs are always asking us questions. We can give them the right answer, we start to give them the information that they need. So that is a very quick case of thank and look and how positive and calm that can be when the dog sees a danger. Now, one of the dogs that came to the clinic was Merlin, a beautiful English Springer Spaniel. Now I've got to admit, I've got a soft spot for those. I've got two myself. Merlin's owner told me that he has a big problem with him of barking when people come to the house. So I decided to go and visit him to see if I could work my magic. <coughs> Do you want to come round? Let's get this under control. We've clearly got the right house. Okay. 
sit here if I can. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, for the time being, we're just going to pay no attention to him to show him this is not his problem. Too often when we talk to dogs all the time, they're going, what do you want? I'm going to get a knock at the door in a minute. Yeah. And we'll see what Merlin see what does. Happens then, yeah. Let's thank, look, and his yeah. necessary time out. Okay? Yeah. Say so thank you. Now go have a look. Come on then. Sit down. Bring. That's it. Without a word. Good. See, that's the second time he's tried that because he's he's already. I said he's already thinking about what else can I do. Some dogs, what they will do for reassurance is jump on their owner, and if the owner gives them the reassurance, actually that's the opposite of what they wanted. They wanted the owner to not react because the owner not reacting is I have a personal space you should respect. But I'm seeing that the panting is already getting less. It's less. You know, it's less intense. You're looking for frequency and intensity to start to come down. Then you know you're making progress. Even if you think, well, the dog's still barking. Not a problem if the dog relaxes quicker. Goes from adrenaline spike to calm sooner rather than later. But he's, yeah. he's doing okay. And we can practice this over and over again yeah. until he goes, why am I getting upset? Because Stuart's not upset. Yeah. And he's showing me that he's having a look. Yeah. So you're taking the role over. Of course, with some dogs, you need to convince them over a certain amount of time because they may have had the job. And he's, he's looking to lay down, let him lay down. Brilliant. What we're looking for is that time from panic to calm to get shorter and shorter and shorter. The more we do it, the quicker he's going to get that. But what was interesting that time was when you thanked him and started to go, he looked back at you. Did you notice that? No, I didn't know. No, I did because you know we've done it a couple of times now. He went, but, but, but. But, but. So the adrenaline was not so high that he couldn't react to anything else. He wasn't. He did. The red mist hadn't descended. He was barking, 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 and then because you did that last time. So and that's why we've got him to calm down that much more quickly. So you, I'm already seeing a little bit of progress. The important thing is when he looked back at you, you didn't look at him. He could see you coming to make the decision. That's going to reassure him. So what I sometimes say to people: if your dog's relaxed and has got used to people, and then you just want to keep it relaxed. Pop it in another room. He may create because, of course, the reason. But this is what's good about this. He's going to go in that room. He's going to create. We'll say goodbye to you. When you open that door, first thing you've got to do is pay no attention to him. Wait for him to leave your own. Then call him to you and give him a big fuss. And then what's happening? He's going to get a lot of. He's already getting a lot of signals this morning. But that's an even bigger signal to show him that he should listen to you, not that you should listen to him. And then when you go back in, you've been away. Doesn't matter how long or short it is. Dog doesn't care, it's what you do when you come back. Okay? So we'll do it again? Yeah. Practice we'll makes perfect. Yeah, we'll have another go. Continue this practice until you feel he's getting better. Merlin responded really well to Stuart going and having a look and then taking him away from the window. If Merlin had carried on barking, I would have suggested to just put him away in a room quietly until he calmed down. And then when he was quiet, he can rejoin the pack. So well done, Stuart. Well done, Merlin. So, here are Tony's top tips to help stop your dog driving you barking mad. Number one, if your dog barks, thank it. Let your dog know that its job is to alert you to the problem. If your dog carries on barking after that, step two is to go and have a look. Assess the situation. That way the dog can see you making a decision and remain calm. Give it a little thank you and either take it away from the problem or just walk away. If your dog carries on barking after that, stage three, is give it a timeout. Pop it somewhere, in another room, out of the way, without saying a word, basically to show the dog you overstepped the mark, calm down. And when your dog is quiet, you can open the door and it can rejoin the family. Thanks for watching, and I hope I've given you something to think about. Now, if you've got any questions, get in touch with me. You can use the link that you can see at the bottom of your screen. But always remember, keep calm and think like a dog.
I've barely got out of there with my life. But it does go to show, it ain't just dogs that think in packs and have a strong sense of territory. Join me next week, where, I, where am I going next week? Uh, Millwall. Millwall? I ain't going to Millwall. Well, I'm an actor, I've, I've done Shakespeare. Stand near the Westbrook, they're more than the best fucking